people in Oakland are sitting outside their homes in lawn chairs having block parties. In Italy, an opera singer sings from his balcony and others sing with their doors open, house to house. In Spain, the people are coming out in the evening and they're just clapping for all the healthcare workers and all those who are working on the front lines right now. In China, they say, the air is much cleaner and clearer. And the people in some of the cities that have been so loud for so long, now that that quiet has come, can hear birds for the first time in a really long time. There's a man that stands on top of his apartment building and leads exercises. And people come outside their homes, six feet apart, of course, and follow along. The boat traffic that normally is really busy on the Venice Canal, pretty constant, has stopped. And guess what? The water has cleared for the first time in centuries. So while none of us wants this virus to be here, we don't want it, to, of course, to harm ourselves or anyone we love, at the same time, something strangely wonderful is emerging. The skies are clearing everywhere and a new dawn is breaking. Now, a lot of you know we've been in this series and many paths to the one series for 10 weeks now. It's been a long journey. In each week, we've explored a different religion or wisdom tradition. Today, it's pretty uncanny timing that we've landed on Taoism. Taoism originates from China. It's ancient wisdom. And the ancient wisdom it brings us, I think, is really perfect for our times. So we're going to explore this a little bit today together as we dive into Taoism. So the Tao just means the way. And so it's, as you can see on your screen, pronounced Tao instead of Tao, as it might look. And um, the Tao is, is, uh, was started, Taoism was started by a man named Lao Tzu. Now Lao Tzu, some say was a man, as I just said, that was born in about 604 BCE. Maybe he was a man, what, maybe he wasn't, nobody's really sure. It could have been a whole collection of people. It could have been uh, a wisdom that sort of developed over time. But we still go with the old boy, the old fellow, the grand old master. These are some of the nicknames for Lao Tzu. There's a great story about Lao Tzu and how the portrait of this religion, this, this being, this man, this wise sage, at one point, he was disheartened because people weren't really following these uh, teachings of natural goodness that he was trying to share with people. They weren't really following the way. And so he got a little disheartened and he climbed on a water buffalo like all of us do when we get a little disheartened. And he started moving westward where now Tibet is located. And it's said that there at the gate of Hankau, pass that there was a gatekeeper and the gatekeeper sensed something about this man that was special that was carrying some kind of wisdom that was val valuable to others and he encouraged him to turn back to stay with the Chinese civilization but Lao Tzu wasn't having any of it it was the end of his years and he wanted to spend the rest of them in solitude so the man the gatekeeper said well, how about if you just write down what you know now that Lao Tzu could agree to. So he retreated for three days and he emerged with some writings, 5,000 characters to be exact, a slim volume known as the Tao Te Ching. So the Tao Te Ching means basically the way and its power. De, the middle word, means power. Tao, we already covered, means way. And so it's this idea of not power the way we understand power in the world today. It's a very different kind of power. It's the divine power. It's the source from within us. And so for us, it requires a sense of humility, a sense of humbleness, a sense of getting out of the way, if you will, so the real way can come through, can 
interact through us, can speak through us, can shape through us and create through us, co-create through us. So maybe that's a little bit of what's happening now. It seems pretty timely to me, this Tao Te Ching and these teachings. So Wu Wei is a key concept in Taoism. Wu Wei is essentially this idea of, in a way, doing without doing, if that makes any sense. It springs forth from being. It's our actions coming from being. And so if we rest like we just did in meditation, and then we act from that place of rest, that place of stillness, it's where we get filled up, right? We go back to the well, we get refilled, and then we can spill out our waters. We can share whatever it is that we have to share. We can serve more fully, more beautifully, and enjoy our lives more fully. So Wu Wei, this concept of Wu Wei, is getting into that flow. It's essentially understanding that Wu Wei is the supreme action. And the action starts with quiet, with rest, with listening, with allowing spirit to move through us. Wu Wei is um, often understood as the way to do is to be. It's one of the sayings that help us understand it. It's when our ego or our conscious effort yields to the greater power. I think you get the idea. I like just saying Wu Wei. When I say it, it sort of reminds me in this kind of whimsical way or delightful way. It brings a little bit of joy to me to say those words. And it's a it's a quick reminder to know that I'm not in control, that I can't make it happen, but I can allow it to happen through me. And when I do this latter, things are a lot more effective. I think we all know this, but for some reason we keep forgetting. And now, well, maybe this is our opportunity to remember Wu Wei and to really get it into the cells of our being, into the deep thoughts, of our minds, the recesses of our minds, and into the the swirling emotions of our hearts. So we can really be this in the world, to be Wu Wei. Now, one of my favorite books on on the Tao is the Tao of Pooh. And so this is a little book by Benjamin Hoff. And um, it's, of course, whimsical and delightful because it's about Winnie the Pooh. And who to better embody the Tao than Winnie the Pooh, this lovable, simple-minded little bear. Winnie the Pooh is um, just in the flow all the time. He's actually Wu Wei in action all the time, isn't he? He, um, he cares about his friends. He's kind. He's um, connecting with people. He's loving with, with people. With If you call Eeyore the donkey and the rabbit and the piglet, <laughs> Christopher Robin is one of the humans in the of course, in the program. And so those characters, the cast of characters in Winnie the Pooh, if you think about them, Eeyore is the pessimist, right? So what does Eeyore do? He frets. And Benjamin Hoff says, you know, Piglet, Piglet's sort of the anxious one, right? So what does Piglet do? He hesitates. And then there's, of course, Owl, who is very knowledgeable. That's kind of wisdom that comes from knowledge. What does he do? He pontificates. And Rabbit, the very responsible one, the sort of serious one, right? He calculates. But Pooh, he just is. And that is really the secret of the Tao, to just be, to be present. Benjamin Hoff shares this to really bring the point home and for you to get a little sense of his writing. I'll share with you this passage. When you work with Wu Wei, he says, you put the round peg in the round hole and the square peg in the square hole. No stress, no struggle. Egotistical desire tries to force that round peg into the square hole, or the square peg into the round hole. Cleverness tries to devise clever ways, crafty ways, to make that peg fit where it doesn't belong. Knowledge tries to figure out why round pegs fit in round holes, and square pegs fit in square holes. But Wu Wei, it doesn't try. It doesn't think about it, it just does it. And when it does, it doesn't appear to do much of anything, but things somehow get done. So that's a little wisdom from the Tao of Pooh. 
And the other element that I wanted to share with you about Taoism is this idea of water. If you think about it, we are water, right? They say, the scientists tell us we're 80% water. We're made of water. This idea of water, of being like water, of flowing like water. If you think about water, it's both flexible and strong, supple in its movements, but also it can be very clear and forceful in its direction. If you think of a waterfall, a rushing river. Our friend Daniel Nema, the New Thought singer that's visited us a couple times at Unity of Walnut Creek, and actually he's coming back, by the way, May 31st, he wrote this beautiful album while he was on sabbatical. And believe it or not, he was in the Red Rocks of Utah when he did it. And there in the Red Rocks of Utah, you imagine that rocky landscape, that dry landscape. You don't really think about water, but that area used to be the sea. And Daniel, when he got quiet during his sabbatical, tapped into those very quiet flowing waters underneath it all. The album that he created during his time of sabbatical in that dry, rocky climate is called Water. And here's its title track. Let's take a listen. I've seen my share of struggle when I thought that I knew best when I've sailed through a storm instead of stopping to rest. And it always seems the hardest when I've made up my stubborn mind Well, I'm changing my ways this time Wanna be like water coming down a mountain Into shadowy canyons flowing from pool to stream Wanna be like water head uphill no more I am bound for the sea have you ever seen an eagle head straight into the wind? He doesn't pick a fight, he spreads his wings and just gives in. And in the end he always makes it home just fine. I guess he knows that every storm subsides. Wanna be like water coming down a mountain in the shadowy Flowing from pool to stream Wanna be like water Head uphill no more I am bound for the sea I'll let nature take its course No more thinking that I know Where this river's meant to go I've railed against the stars For the cards that I've been dealt For the lottery I've never won For the heartache that I've felt But it always seems when I let go Of expectation and regret Life has plenty of surprises for me, yeah I wanna be like water Coming down a mountain In the shadowy Flowing from pool to stream Wanna be like water Head uphill no more I am bound for the sea Wanna be like water Coming down a mountain In the shadowy canyons Flowing from pool to stream Wanna be like water Head uphill no more I am bound So what would it look like in your life to become like water, to flow like water? Can you imagine how things might be different? I've really been sitting with this for myself. What would it be like if I really practiced Wu Wei? I could almost cry when I think about that because it really taps that, that true space deep in the recesses, maybe like Daniel was tapping that flowing water way down deep beneath the red rock. And when I tap that, I feel personally that if I flowed like water, if I really became water, 
acted in that way, I'd have more joy. My life would be filled with more rest and more play, more ease, more presence. Maybe that's true for you too, but I invite you to, to just think about it. If you were to flow like water, how would life be different for you? There's other characteristics of water that I think are really helpful to us to consider at this time. You know, water is really adaptable. And, well, we sure are in a time to be adapting, right? <laughs> to be flexible, to be supple like water. And so how might you adapt to the changes that are being given to us for our lives? What might happen for you as you stay home more, maybe take more walks, find new ways to connect to your own being, to the God of your own being, to the people in your life? You know, water doesn't just flow and adapt. It also, have you ever noticed, it clears when it stands still kind of like those canals in Venice that aren't being turned up all the time by the boats and the traffic and the people. And so if we stand still a little bit more or sit still a little bit more, things will begin to clear. You might even declutter your home during this time. But even deeper than that, clearing up relationships, maybe letting as the sediment settles and the waters become clearer, your mind to be clearer and more at ease, your heart to be unburdened. I think there's a lot of lessons we can learn from Wu Wei and the power of becoming like this element of water. There's a passage from the Tao Te Ching, a short one that I want to share with you from chapter 29. Those who would take over the earth and shape it to their will never I noticed, succeed. The earth is like a vessel, so sacred. Did you ever notice that scared and sacred are so close? It's just one little letter scramble. And it seems to me that right now, I don't know, a lot of us are scared, or some of us are scared some of the time at least. And yet we can change that as we shift into this knowing of sacredness. What if instead of being scared, we move toward the sacred? What if we tap that, brought that forth? I think we'd feel a lot calmer for one. And then we could see some of the wisdom begin to tune in at a deeper level to that, that sacred vessel that we are, that God is, that the earth is. So in the passage, he talks about those who don't succeed by trying to shape the world themselves, those of us, I include myself in that, <laughs> definitely, who try to shape the world according to our own will. He says, they never, I notice, succeed. But what could we do instead? What if we allowed ourselves to be shaped and therefore then shaped the world accordingly out of that guidance, out of that deep listening. It's really all it takes, stopping and listening, allowing the wisdom to come forth, and then just doing as we are guided, being present to the moment that is affording us right now. So some are asking, how long is this virus gonna last? and we could get back to live, our lives as we knew them. I'm not sure I wanna go back. I think the question that we really need to be asking now is not so much how long before we can go back to our old lives, but how long before we'll really look and see in the clear waters the divine reflection of who we truly are. How long? before we'll really remember. In Taoism, there's a symbol that you're probably very familiar with. It's called the yin-yang. The yin-yang is a holistic symbol, but in it, it has its opposites. There is a little dot of challenge in opportunity and a little dot of opportunity in challenge. 
There's a little bit of rest or a seed of rest inside action and a seed of action inside rest. And those two sort of unfurl and dance with each other. They come forth if we're in Wu Wei at the right time in the right way. You'll notice that the symbol always has a circle around it. And that circle is to remind us that this is our wholeness. This is the oneness. These different aspects of being, these seemingly opposites, light and dark, masculine, feminine, and all the other opposites we can think of. They don't work against each other. They work together. They work in a natural rhythm. It's another word or way of of translating the Tao Te Ching is the way of natural goodness. And so in a way, the yin-yang symbol and meditating upon it helps us understand that. Somebody suggested in our class Thursday night that the yin-yang symbol is meant to be walked along that line that has the two parts to it. So, just a little something for us to consider. It's not for us to force the wings of the butterfly to open, but just to let them open in their own way. And so too it is for us with rest and action and all these seeming opposites. To be, to accept, to allow, to flow. What a way to live. I think it's a lot more joyful a lot more easy, and a lot more positive for all. In Chinese, the word for crisis means both challenge and opportunity. And boy, if that isn't right on time for us. (laughs) This seeming crisis is both a challenge and an opportunity. So let's meet this worldwide challenge, this opportunity, with the supreme action of Wu Wei. Humanity's control has been halted now. The divine is in control. So let's go with it. Let's make the most of that. Let's not just hole up in our homes and then, you know, be anxious to get back to our old ways of life. Let's allow this time to be what transforms us and to come forth from this time in this flow, in this Wu Wei is to let go and to let God. That's my greatest hope, that we all allow the transformation to happen in us that's happening. It's happening. (laughs) The world is halted in a way that none of us could have ever imagined even weeks ago. And so here we are. And here God is. And here is the sacred vessel of earth. So let's go with it. Let's affirm that supreme action of Wu Wei. Let's let go and let God. I invite you to say this with me. Wu Wei. I let go and I let God flow. So it is. Bless you.